Great Gatsby, written by uh, me. I'm going to take you on a journey through time to the summer of 1922 in the fictional East and West Exit of New York. I'm Nick Carraway, World War I veteran, low and dropped integrity amongst the sea of decadence, great at parties, good with kids, single again. First off, we have our titular character, Mr. Gatsby. Big Gatsby, everyone. Big Gatsby, a millionaire, to which the title of this book owes its name. Mr. Gatsby is what some might call a self-made man. His reputation, his wealth, his soul, all self-made. And all made to acquire the heart of his one desire, the lovely Daisy Buchanan. <clears throat> the, uh, well, um, Daisy Buchanan, everyone. She is, uh, what you might call a, uh, a golden girl. But sadly, this blossoming beauty is already taken, already spoken. Sadly, her heart cannot belong to Mr. Gatsby. She belongs to one Tom Buchanan. <laughs> Mr. Buchanan, a mountain of man and professional narcissist. <laughs> Mr. Buchanan is no swimming. The pawns are in place, the stage is set. It feels only now we can begin. We present to you the great Gatsby, sort of. No, Doctor. Hey, Nick. Uh, I heard you want to talk about Gatsby. Can you, can you tell me about Gatsby? Oh, um, no. I mean, he represented everything for which I have unaffected scorn, you know? But something gorgeous about it. Can you explain that to me? I don't know. Just, it's almost like, it's like one of those intricate machines that measure earthquakes a thousand miles away. Uh, I'm sure. That is a really sad, sad thing. You know what you should do? You got your things? You should write a book about it. Book? You know, a book is a great way to let all your feelings. That's how you should write one. Book? Mm hmm A book. I did. <clears throat> Can I see it? This is me. Wow. You know, now that you've written a book, I think it's for, for the next stage. You should write a TV show. younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. The Great Gatsby is told through Nick, or actually Nick's perception of Gatsby. As Nick introduces his background, he tries to encourage the reader to trust his judgment, believing that he is both thoughtful and observant in the most neutral sense possible. Nick, however, is an unreliable narrator, Due to his biased opinion of the great Gatsby, Nick sees Gatsby as a figure untouched by the darkness of doubt, fully convinced that through any task he is given, he will be able to fulfill it with undeniable perfection, like that of a machine programmed to go through a multitude of extensive endeavors to complete the mission assigned. To Nick, Gatsby is his romantic ideal, his admiration, his definition of great. 
The silhouette of a moving cat wavered across the moonlight, and turning my head to watch it, I saw that I was not alone. Fifty feet away, a figure had emerged from the shadow of my neighbor's mansion and was standing with his hands in his pockets regarding the silver pepper of the stars. Something in his leisurely movements and the secure position of his feet upon the lawn suggested that it was Mr. Gatsby himself, come out to determine what share was his of our local heavens. I decided to call to him. Miss Baker had mentioned him at dinner, and that would do for an introduction. But I didn't call to him, for he gave a sudden intimation that he was content to be alone. He stretched out his arms towards the dark water in a curious way, and far as I was from him, I could have sworn he was trembling. Involuntarily, I glanced seaward and distinguished nothing except a single green light, minute and far away. That might have been the end of the dock. When I looked once more for Gatsby, he had vanished, and I was alone in the unquiet darkness. The color green is commonly associated with the idea of wealth. As paper money is imbued with the color green, the sense of wealth is what Gatsby believes will eventually enable him to be with his destined one. The purpose of the green light also reassembles a future that is forever elusive. It symbolizes Gatsby's one goal in life, to be with Daisy. He desperately desires to revert time five years ago, the time where he and Daisy shared each other's warmth. To Gatsby, this light is a sign that proved to him that they existed in the same reality. His reality is that one day the green light wouldn't be across the docks, but in the palm of his hands. But above the gray land and the spasms of bleak dust which drift endlessly over it, you perceive, after a moment, the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. The eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg are blue and gigantic. Their irises are one yard high. They look out of no face, but instead from a pair of enormous yellow spectacles which pass over a non-existent nose. Evidently, some wild wag of an oculus set them there to fatten his practice in the borough of Queens, and then sank down himself into eternal blindness, or forgot them and moved away. But his eyes, dimmed a little by many paintless days, under sun and rain, brood on over the solemn dumping ground. It is here we introduced to the Valley of Ashes, a cake of iron glazed with ash, and soup produced by neighboring industrial factories. It is here we introduced to Dr. Eckelberg, or rather, a billboard advertising Dr. Eckelbert's services, that alone stands in the Valley of Ashes. The Valley of Ashes represents the moral decadence lying underneath the bright and colorful facade of the Roaring Twenties. The eyes of Dr. Eckelberg represent the eyes of God, forever watching over the moral decay of America. It also represents how Americans have begun to abandon their spiritual values. Gatsby, his hand still in his pockets, was reclined against the mantelpiece in a strained counterfeit of perfect ease, even of boredom. His head leaned back so far that it rested against the face of a defunct mantelpiece clock, and far from this position his distraught eyes stared down at Daisy, who was sitting, frightened but graceful, on the edge of a stiff chair. Luckily the clock took this moment to tilt dangerously at the pressure of his head, whereupon he turned and caught it with trembling fingers, and set it back in place. Then he sat down, rigidly, his elbow on the arm of the sofa, and his chin in his hand. The clock represents the regression of time, and Gatsby's inability to stop time from marching on, as the clock was already broken, meaning that Gatsby had lost his time to be with Daisy a long time ago. Hey, you want to buy some jewelry? Uh, I don't know. Ah, oh, come on, come on. All right, then. Oh, you won't be disappointed, man. You won't be disappointed. I can't do it. What do you have? Oh, uh, I got everything. I got gold, I got silver, I got platinum. If you got a girl, her oh, it's right here. Yeah? How much? Um, it's, uh, it's about 500 bucks each. Are you crazy? Ah, oh, come on, don't look at me like that, man. A guy's gotta make a living, you know? A guy's gotta make some dough. All right, then, I'll take the platinum. So, uh, which one do you want? All right. All right, here you are, sir. Have a good day, yeah? Sure. Oh, thank you.
What's the matter, Nick? Do you object shaking hands with me? You know what I think about you, Tom. You're really crazy, Nick. Real crazy. What's the matter with you? What'd you say to Wilson, Nick, huh? I told him the truth. He came to the door while we were getting ready to leave. And when I sent down the word that we were, and he tried to force his way up the stairs. He was crazy enough to kill me if I hadn't told him who owned the car. His hands was on the revolver every minute he was in that house. What if I did tell him that fellow had a cubby? He threw dust into your eyes just like he did to Deezus. But he was a tough one. He ran with Myrtle like he ran run over a dog and never even stopped his car. You stupid piece of Daisy and Tom have no sense of responsibility, for they have money to hide behind. Their morals have diminished so much they hardly have any at all. Yeah!